time to begin our service tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Yes. Amen. 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 He's good on Sunday morning. He's good on Sunday night. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer tonight. Let's invite the presence of God into this service tonight. Let's just give God the glory for this day that he has made and for this opportunity to worship him tonight. Yeah. Our Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for this day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be back in your house. We offer unto you, Lord, the sacrifice of praise. Yeah. Bless this service tonight for your glory. Have your way, Father, as we lift our cup up to you. We ask you to fill it one more time. Accomplish your perfect will in our hearts, Lord. Meet every need. And, Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' unfailing name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's sing that song at Calvary, page 465, at Calvary.
Since the Savior found me, I think all of us can remember with fondness that day or that moment when Jesus found us. Amen. Oh yeah. A lot of times we like to say, "I found Jesus," Amen. but the ones that were lost, but the one that was lost wasn't Jesus; it was us. Amen. 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 And he drew us by His Spirit. <laughs> yes. Amen. He sent that uh, Holy Spirit GPS to guide us to the right place. Mm. What place was that? The foot of the cross. Amen. 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 The foot of the cross, so we can surrender our life to Him. I'm just thankful for everyone that is here. Just yes. again, let Jesus have his way in your life. And those online, we welcome you as well. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Be mindful of our schedule during this week. We have our, mon our Monday, our Tuesday evening Bible study at 7.30. And then our midweek service on Thursday at 7.30 as well. Come and join us. Amen. 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 During those times. We look forward to God moving again. At this time, our usher will come. We'll receive our Sunday night offering, budget offering, and tithe. And we know that all Christians faithfully give in the offering. Amen. 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 Faithfully give in their in, uh, the pledge for their budget offerings. Faithfully pay their tithes, and God will bless you according to your giving. Amen. Brother Darren, will you pray? Amen. 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 Dear Lord, thank you for this night, this evening, and this service. Dear Lord, bless this tithes and offering to your house and your kingdom, dear Lord. Bless the gift and giver, I pray. Amen. Amen.
church. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise and glory tonight. Let's just slip our hands up and pray that prayer tonight, shall we? Lord, may all who come behind us find us faithful. Lord, we just worship you, Lord, and look to you, God, for your help and your grace. Lord, that's what we want to do, Lord. We want to, Lord, live a life of faithfulness, God. Live a life of devotion, loving, Lord, that those who come behind us... Lord, we'll know that, Lord, there's a reality in serving you. Father, we thank you tonight and give you all the glory. We thank you for the privilege tonight of, Lord, being in this place. We thank you, God, for the privilege, Lord, of just being re receivers, God, and benefactors of your grace and your goodness, O oh Lord. We thank you tonight, Father, for your love towards us. Have your way, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May all who come behind us find us faithful. Hallelujah. Yes. Faithful to the Lord. Amen. 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 Blessed to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise God for this opportunity that we have. I want to read tonight from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, and verse 23 and 24. Not a lot of verses to read tonight, but a lot in these verses, uh, perhaps, that we want to get to. Mark 9, verse 23 and 24. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Yes. Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. And I want to use... Two verses for a text. Oh, we want to just look at both of these. I couldn't decide on which one to use, so we'll just use both of them. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, and also 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. I'll read Hebrews first. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's right. And with the help of the Lord, I just want to preach for a little while on a message titled, It's Faith, Not Feelings. Amen. It's Faith, Not Feelings. Amen. Right. Let us pray and ask God's blessing once again tonight. Reverend Rissazabo, sir, will you please stand and pray? Thank you. Father, we look to you tonight and we just thank you once again for your faithfulness to us, for your presence tonight in this service. Yes, Lord. Just continue to have your way and bless as your messenger preaches what you've laid upon his heart. Yes. And let your will be accomplished. Yes, Jesus. And all the glory and praise be given to you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <clears throat> praise the Lord. In our Bible setting tonight, we read about a time when there was a father whose child needed healing. And we read in this passage in Mark chapter 9, there's a little bit of preliminary setting and background to the verses that we read to you, how that this man had come and he brought his son to the disciples, seeking the disciples' help, apparently, and, and, and you can, to use the word, extrapolate. That makes you smeal, feel smart, doesn't it? <laughs> to extrapolate from this text in this setting that uh, the man uh, obviously was a man of faith. He heard about Jesus. He knew that Christ was healing and able to heal and just... By default, he supposed uh, that the disciples could do just as, just as much as Jesus could. And the man brought his child to the disciples, and 
uh, look to them, hey, my child is sick and has a devil or something, can you heal him? And the disciples tried to heal and to set this boy free, but the scripture tells us that uh, it didn't work in so many words. He had tried, the disciples had attempted to bring healing uh, to, this, to this man's child, but they could not. And then the Bible tells us then that the scribes and the people were having a conversation about what was going on, and Jesus uh, shows up, and he asks them what they're talking about, and they begin to tell Jesus that, hey, this man's uh, child is sick, and we brought him to the disciples, and they could not heal him, and here we are. And Jesus responds to them in a politically incorrect way and says, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Yes. Maybe Jesus was just a little bit disturbed at their lack of faith because they did not have faith to believe that this boy could be healed. And so Jesus rebukes their unbelief and he tells them, uh, what we all should do, and that is bring our problems to Jesus. Amen? Amen. If you want to cut to the chase in life, if you want to avoid disappointments and avoid letdowns and avoid, uh, amen, people not being able to meet the need in your life, uh, just bring it right to Jesus. Amen? Amen? Just go right to the Lord tonight, and, and that's essentially what Jesus does. Just bring the boy to me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, the Bible says, straightway the spirit that was in this boy, it tear him, and he fell down on the ground, and he wallowed around foaming. And this demon that was inside of him, this spirit began to trouble this boy. And here's the, the setting tonight that we want to get to, how that Jesus began to ask a few questions about how, uh, how long it's been and how long this has been going on. He gets a little bit of background information and then he he comes here and he says if you can believe all things are possible to him that believes because here we have a man that was was told by the Lord if you'd only believe anything's possible amen anything's possible and the Lord in the scripture here and in this place and all the others we never find one time where Jesus says if you feel like it or in any way appeal to people's feelings uh, about whether or not uh, or whether or not their feelings had anything to do with the outcome or with what uh, they were looking for desiring. He doesn't appeal to their feelings. He doesn't say if you feel like it, uh, uh, anything's possible. He doesn't say, well, if it feels good to you, uh, the healing could happen, or if it feels right. Or nothing like that takes place uh, in the New Testament that we find where Christ or even the disciples in any way uh, go around taking polls and asking people, how are you feeling today? Or how do you feel about the service? Or how do you feel about your situation? Or how do you feel about what's going on in the world today? We don't see that in the Bible. Amen. Amen. And I believe it's a real stark contrast to uh, the way people are very touchy feeling in the world today. In 2020, uh, it's all about feelings. Yes. It's all about feelings. You'll have people leave the church service, and, and I hear people say sometimes, Man, it felt great to be in church today, and it just felt so awesome, and it just felt good in my soul, and it felt this way, it felt that way. Well, that was great in the morning, but what about tonight? Does yes. it still feel good? Amen. Amen. Amen, or any other time, but people a lot of times will share their feelings, uh, but you don't hear them talk about their faith as much Amen. as they talk about their feelings. Amen. And we see it's very easy in a society in which we live for people to express their feelings, uh, and I think society even promotes that, uh, uh, to, to, to talk about your feelings, because that's what we do. We talk about feelings. We ask how people are feeling, and we gauge everything based upon feeling, and there's very little discussion and talk about faith. 
Hey, what does faith say? How's your faith today? Amen. Not how's your feelings today? Amen? Amen? And I believe as we look at the Word of God, I believe there's a lot of encouragement in the Scriptures, uh, especially when we look at some of the things that the people of God went through and some of the things, the experiences that the early church went through, how that they faced a lot of hard times and, and persecutions and, and even being killed for their faith. They went through a lot of things, uh, but nor do we hear them talking about their feelings, amen? amen? But they do talk about their faith in God. Amen. They do talk about how they believe God was able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or yes. think. We do hear the apostle talking about how that I, I, I believe that I can do all things through Christ uh, which strengthens me. Amen. We do hear scripture after scripture talking about how that it's our faith uh, that is necessary and that's how we we walk tonight. Amen. Amen. He said in 2 Corinthians, for we walk by faith and not by sight. What is that? Another way of saying we walk by faith in what we believe and not by what we see or by what we feel because the sight appeals to the senses and we don't, we don't live according to our senses, but rather we're told in the scripture that just shall live by what? By their faith. Amen. Amen. By their faith. Uh, this is established all throughout the Bible, especially in Hebrews chapter 11, where he said, without faith, uh, it's impossible to please him. We know that faith is a necessary, uh, nece necessary ingredient, if you will, in the recipe for the Christian success. But nowhere does it say your feelings, uh, amen, are something that we, we should rely upon or even lean on. Yes. Feelings are deceptive, amen? Yes, amen? Feelings are deceptive. He never said, if you can feel good, all things are possible to him that feels good, amen? But he says, if you believe, if you believe. Now we see something in the scripture that faith and feelings are something totally different. Mm -hmm. Feelings have to do with the flesh and how our senses are and how we feel in the flesh. Now we know that this body and this carcass in which we're walking around in, it is, it is very, it's fleshly, it's of the earth, uh, it's from the dust, it's going to go back to the dust. Uh, we feel all kinds of things uh, while we live in this shell. Amen? Uh, we feel good, we feel bad. We feel laggy, we feel excited. We feel sick, we feel well. We feel all kinds of things uh, uh, while we're in this flesh. Uh, and that's just part of the deal. Amen? That's just part of the way that it is. Even Jesus said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen? And so we don't lean upon, and the warning in the scripture is to not lean upon the flesh, but rather lean upon and trust the spirit, uh, amen, uh, that we have on the inside, because it's with our spirit uh, that uh, we believe God, that we have faith in God, that we trust in God, amen. And so we have in our Bible setting tonight, I think, maybe someone that had a struggle with their faith. As we see the Father even crying out, uh, as he said in response, uh, Lord, I believe. And here he is crying and weeping. And he says, Lord, I believe. And then he makes an odd statement that we don't read anywhere else in the Bible. And that is, but help my unbelief. Yes. <laughs> Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And it's obvious that this man was struggling. He was struggling with believing. He was struggling with uh, this great concept that if you just believe, anything's possible. And here he is just being let down by the disciples. Uh, here he is as a father, been dealing with his son for all of his life. Uh, ever since he was a child, he's had this issue. Uh, and I don't know who else he went to. Maybe he tried doctors. Maybe he tried uh, different people of that day to try to bring a remedy and solution. But no matter what he tried, it didn't work. And maybe there was hopeful moments, uh, but he was let down. Maybe there were days that he felt good about the 
advice that he was getting only to find out that it wasn't good advice at all. And I believe maybe he lived this life of roller coaster emotions where he was up, he was down. He felt good, he felt bad. And he was so unstable to where even when Christ himself is telling the man, if you just believe, anything's possible. Yes. He says, yes, Lord, I believe, but then I don't believe. And he had a struggle. And I believe this is like a lot of people tonight uh, that are struggling. They're on the fence. Uh, they believe, but they don't believe. They, they believe in the spirit, but in the flesh, uh, they, their, their feelings tell them otherwise. And their feelings uh, even say it's not going to happen. Their feelings say there isn't any progress. Uh, and their feelings say all kinds of things. Uh, but we need to remember tonight, uh, it's not, amen, our feelings uh, that make a difference, but it's our faith in God. Yes. He, amen. God can be doing a miracle in your life, uh, and you could not even feel it, because uh, you don't have to feel it for it to be God. Yes. You don't have to feel it for God to be doing something in your soul. Yes. It's never been a requirement, uh, amen, in order to please Him yes. in this life. Amen. Let's go on. Although uh, feelings are real, I'm not saying feelings are not real, but feelings are very real. But there's not something that we should rely upon, amen, or depend on as a gauge or as some kind of guide whether or not God's working or whether or not uh, things are going the way that they should be going. Because again, feelings have to do with the flesh. This flesh has fallen. One day you're good, one day you're not. But God is uh, ever the same. Amen? Yeah. There's something that doesn't change, and that is God tonight. Amen? Yes. He never changes. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. Uh, hallelujah! Amen. He's still the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. He doesn't change. Feelings change. People change. The weather changes. Politics change. Presidents change. All kinds of things change. But God never changes. Amen? Amen. This is something that we have, amen, that is an anchor for our soul. I don't know why, but while I was preparing this message, I thought about a time when I was younger, maybe, I don't know, maybe 11, 12, maybe even 13, riding my bike home uh, one day from school. We lived close enough. We rode our bikes to school. We didn't take buses, and mom and dad seldom dropped us off. We took ourselves to school, most of my you know, older days that I was responsible enough. We rode our bikes to school, and thank God for those old recycled bicycles that my dad got from some trash pile somewhere and made them work, <laughs> but they got us through school. Amen. Amen. Yeah. They were, amen. Anyway, <laughs> they worked, and I remember one day riding home, and uh, there was this particular house, and I remember it as clear as day when I was riding along the road, and this dog, one of the houses had a dog, and while I was riding, this dog came running out and was barking really loud, and I remember the feeling that I had as I was riding my bike, and this dog was charging at me. I remember that feeling uh, like it was yesterday, that, that, uh, that just really sick in my stomach feeling and nervous feeling. And I just felt like I was scared. I felt terrified. I thought this dog was going to come attack me and jump on me while I was riding my bike. Uh, but you know what? I didn't notice the chain <laughs> that this dog was attached to. Uh, and the dog came out and <clears throat> the brakes were put on and the dog couldn't go any further. And I went on my way riding my bike. And after a little while, my heart rate went down and I felt uh, at ease but I'll never forget that feeling how that at that moment I felt like I was being attacked I felt like that dog was gonna get me I felt like man this is it uh, my my ten years whatever life flashed before my eyes and I remember feeling so scared only to find out that the dog was on a chain and boom, it couldn't go any further. Man. And you know, I thought about that tonight as a lot of times in life, that's exactly how feelings are. We see things, we feel things, we fear things that are charging at us or maybe appears to be coming our way. Even the devil himself, the Bible says, uh, uh, to be sober, to be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, he walketh about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But did you know there's a chain attached to the devil? He can only go so far. He has a bark, but he can't bite the in Jesus Christ. Amen. And no, we're not riding bicycles. Uh, amen. But we're riding on this gospel 
ship tonight. Yeah. And as we sail, amen, to our destination of heaven, there will be the dogs. There will be the devils. There will be yeah. things that try to bring feelings and try to bring fear into our heart. But remember, it's not your feelings but faith that makes the difference. Yeah. Because in God, greater is he that is in us than he that is Yes. We need to learn to push our feelings aside and say, God is God. No matter what I feel, no matter what people say, no matter what's going on, he's still my rock. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. The one that we stand on, the one that we're firm and stable for on tonight. Going on to what he said in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary has a roaring lion is seeking whom he may devour He's trying to devour. He's trying to strike fear. Amen. Even in our present day, he's trying to make people worried, afraid, and they're getting uneasy. There's a lot of people, and there's a lot of reasons tonight, and, and I'm not just going to take a, a, a pot shot at any one particular subject, but there's a lot of things tonight that are causing people to feel uneasy. Amen? Amen? To feel uneasy, to feel afraid, to feel worried, to feel this, that, and the other. It's been going on for ages, but, you know, it seems even lately the, uh, the, the heat's been turned up. Right? There's a lot of things that if we're not careful, and if we're giving in to our feelings, uh, we'll feel angry, we'll feel frustrated, we'll feel uh, just annoyed. Amen. Amen. All these things. We, Mark and I were talking before service about carpentry and about working and things. You know, there's something, in my opinion, there's, there's a uh, certain level of stress relief when you do work. When you do work or activities, even just exercise in and of itself. The doctors have even proven this, that is a way to relieve stress. And you wouldn't necessarily think that going and walking and running or doing something will leave, relieve stress, but it is a way that the body operates and somehow the chemistry works where you go and do something uh, of exercise or some uh, extracurricular activity, it does something about you. It makes you calm. It brings you down. And, and we were talking about uh, woodwork and doing things. And Mark made, mentioned, he said, no wonder Jesus was a carpenter. A carpenter. And I said, yeah, that's right. He probably, he probably was out uh, making tables and stuff and said, man, i got to get away from these people. Let me go make something and working in the wood shop and doing something to relieve some stress. I, I can just picture Jesus wanting to get away from folks and wanting to go work out in the shed. and Let me just relieve some stress there because these folks are annoying me. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But even in a Bible setting, He's like, you faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Because there's so many times where these people, they try to do things their way. They relied upon themselves. They relied upon their effort. Even the disciples, the Bible said, they tried to do what Jesus did, but to no avail. They tried maybe just copying Christ. Well, Jesus did it this way. Let's do it the way Jesus did, and maybe it'll work. And apparently that's what they were attempting to do. They tried. They tried to cast the spirit out. We don't know what they did to try to get the demon out. And uh, Maybe did they say, you know, did they try to repeat what Jesus did and with another situation? Come out of him! You know, did they try to anoint the man with uh, clay that they spit on the ground and made? Did they try to copy Jesus in some way? He was the reference. We don't know exactly what they did. But it didn't work. Amen. It didn't work. Uh, they relied upon what they felt was the best thing to do. And it didn't work. And you know what? The Bible tells us that Jesus uh, later on would talk to the disciples because they asked the question, Lord, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we cast the devil out like you did? Well, Jesus said, this kind goeth not out except by prayer and by fasting. He, Jesus was telling them that you got to do a little bit more than just to copy me or rely upon what you felt was the right thing. He said there's more. There's a deeper reality. There's some growth involved. Amen. There's some strengthening involved. And we know tonight that faith, uh, you know, a lot of times is like a muscle. 
It can and should be exercised. We need to exercise our faith more than we exercise our feelings. Yes. Amen. Amen. We need to strengthen our faith more than we strengthen or give heed to or give energy to our feelings. Right. The Bible says in 1 Timothy first, uh, chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, but refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Yes. He speaks about exercising the flesh versus exercising the spirit. Exercising in fleshly things or exercising ourselves in godly things. Amen. Yes. It, it makes a difference. <clears throat> when we worry, we're not exercising faith. We're exercising that the flesh. And we're giving in to the flesh and we're just feeding it. When we worry, when we complain, when we grumble, when we murmur, we're not exercising faith. We're giving in to the fleshly feeling and trying to control things the way that we think we can control them. And God says, no, that's not going to profit you anything. And taking a little bit out of context here, it's not going to profit. To, amen, to exercise yourselves and these feelings and these uh, bad ideas or bad feelings, whatever it might be. But he says there is a benefit when you exercise yourself in godliness. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. We need to go to the gym and hit the godly ways today. Do some Holy Ghost arm curls with the Word of God. Get out the scriptures. Get out the promises. Amen. Instead of complaining, let's take out the promises of Almighty God and speak of his love, that speak of, uh, amen, his miracle working yeah, power, yeah. and speak of his greatness and his majesty, yeah. and lift up the name of Almighty God, amen, because yeah. it profits yeah. more to exercise our faith than it does to give in to our feelings, amen, yeah. I know we all have them, and I know they're all real, but you know what, we'll feel so much better in life if we learn just to have faith, yeah. and talk about our faith, and talk the right muscle. Faith comes by hearing, the Bible says. Yes. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by what? By the Word of God. Yes. The Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Amen. Yes. The more we hear the Word, the more we hear His precious promises, the more we fill our hearts and our minds with the, the words of God, the more faith will grow in our hearts. Yes. And the more faith we have, the stronger we will be. And when things come our way, we'll lean on the faith that we have rather than the feelings that we have. Faith tonight is also measured out by God Himself. In Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 8, He said, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members of another. And he says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. <clears throat> What does that mean? Prophesy according to the faith that you have, not according to someone else's faith. Amen. Yes. Use the proportion of faith that you have. Amen. Yes. And he says on ministry, let us all wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, and he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And it speaks to us how that God has made the body of Christ one body with many members. And you know what? Each member of the body of Christ is given the right proportion of faith. Amen. Yes. Just like uh, our arm muscles, uh, our arms have uh, a little bit bigger muscles than our pinky, our pinky finger does uh, because it's all given in proportion to its necessary function. Yes. Now if you're 
pinky finger had the same size uh, muscle as your bicep, uh, you'd probably look kind of funny. If you had all these big muscles on your finger and your finger, your arm here looked like a bean or something, uh, you'd look funny. It's not in proportion. Amen. What is he saying? He's saying God puts us up, up to us together according to the proportion that is needed. Yeah. And so it is in our function, in our lives. God is going to help us and give us the faith that we need according to our function, our purpose in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. So wait on God and let God give you the faith. Yeah. Don't worry about what someone else is doing or what someone else has. You take what God has given in you and you use it to the best of your ability Amen. to bring glory to God. Amen. 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 Faith comes by God but it also comes by the Spirit's indwelling. The Spirit's indwelling. I'm talking about faith not feelings tonight. Yes. In Galatians chapter 5 it tells us about the works of the flesh in verses 19 through 21. But then in verse 22 he turns and he talks about the fruit of the Spirit. He says the fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, the Bible says. Yes. Faith is a fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a byproduct. It is something that God does inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. This is why we need the Spirit's indwelling. Amen. Amen. Because you cannot have fruit. Unless you have the Spirit of God in you. Amen. Amen. You won't have love, joy, faith, peace, long-suffering, all these things, unless you have the Spirit of God living in you, because that's where it comes from. Amen. Amen. You can't love without God. You can't have faith without God. Amen. You can't have peace without God. Amen. You can't have patience without God by the Holy Spirit Amen. working in you and through you. And I want you to know tonight, that's why God sent the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We need God's Spirit because that's where faith comes from. Amen. That's where these things come from that He calls fruit. Not our feelings, not our flesh, but what God, by His Spirit, is trying to operate and work through those that surrender to Him and allow God to be God. Amen. Amen. We spoke this morning about giving our hearts to the King of Kings, allowing the, the rightful King to sit upon the throne of our hearts. Amen. How that He's the one. If He's allowed to take His place in our heart to rule and to reign, He will be the one to help guide us and lead us. And He will help us tonight to not live by our feelings, but to live by faith. Live by faith. When people talk about their feelings all the time, and let you know that they're, they have more feelings than they do faith. When they talk about how it felt this way, and it felt that way, and oh, I feel this, and I feel that, and I feel this, seldom do you hear them talk about, I believe, I know, I have faith, God will, God can, God shall. People that talk about their feelings are people that live by their feelings, and they don't live by their faith. I'm sure that God's people felt something. When you read about the miracles in the scriptures, I'm sure that blind Bartimaeus felt something. But he wasn't relying upon his feelings that day when he heard Christ coming by and he cried out for the Son of David to have mercy upon him. Amen. Amen. I believe, if anything, he was tired of his feelings. He was tired of feeling let down and feeling and being blind and feeling like an outcast and feeling like he's got to beg all his life. Anything, he probably felt tired of it. Maybe that's one ingredient that, uh, that as to why people don't change sometimes because they're just not tired yet. Amen. 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 Some people just aren't tired yet. Right. You wonder why people keep doing stuff. Why are people, why do, why do some people change? <laughs> Why do they keep doing that? They're not tired yet. Could be. Amen. I don't know. Could be. They're not tired enough yet. Because when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, amen, you won't let anything come and stop you. Amen. You'll get to God. You'll make it happen. Amen. You'll, you'll make it work. Amen. And you get tired enough. But I'm sure that God's people had feelings. 
We don't throw feelings out altogether because God does give us a spirit of joy. And we feel joy. We feel happiness. We, we feel things by the Holy Spirit. But these are all things that have to be worked, <clears throat> worked in by exercise and by use and by learning and growing in God. I was thinking about how it must have felt for the people of God to see the walls of Jericho fall down. I'm sure it felt great to see the walls of Jericho come down. And I'm sure it felt a little bit unnerving too to walk around this great walled city one time a day for six days and then be told to march around it seven times on the seventh day. You know, I'm sure they had some mixed feelings. Like, what are we doing walking around the city? Aren't we like warriors and soldiers, but here we are just walking around? And they couldn't say anything. Makes you wonder. God said, don't even say anything. You walk, march around in silence. Don't even speak a word. He didn't want them complaining. <laughs> he didn't want them talking. He wanted them to be silent. Well, God was doing things behind the scene that they didn't see, that they didn't understand. But I'm sure they had feelings if they walked around the walls of Jericho. But you know, it wasn't feelings that were going to make things different. Amen. It was their faith. It was God's promise. It was their obedience to God, regardless of what they felt. Amen. When God says, do something, we do it in obedience and by faith. I'm sure that David felt pretty good when Goliath was lying on the ground dead. But I'm also sure that he probably felt a little bit uneasy maybe. A little bit nervous. Maybe he had feelings as he was the only one in front of all those people. I don't think David was some kind of superhero that was devoid of feelings and devoid of anxiety and devoid of any kind of humanity as he was standing out there and everyone was against him and he was the only one willing to go out there against Goliath the giant. I'm sure he had some of those feelings. Amen? It's only real to feel a little bit nervous. But you know what he did with them? He stuffed them down. Amen? He put them in their place. I believe any feeling he had, amen, was replaced by faith because uh, he started talking about uh, how God helped him before. He started talking about what God did in the past. Uh, and I believe that's the quickest way to get rid of those feelings of doubt uh, and anxiety. Start talking about the goodness of God. Amen. Start talking about what God has done already. Amen. And then just like David said, the same God that delivered me out of the mouth uh, delivered uh, uh, out of me, the, from the lion and from the bear I was able to save the sheep. He started talking about it. He started talking about what God did in the past. And you know what? I believe while he talked about it, his spirit began to get strengthened. He began to encourage himself in the Lord. And he built up his faith. And he said, you know what? I'm going to do this. There's a cause. And he went out there without the armor, but with an old slingshot and a stone. Why? Because he had faith. Whatever feelings he had, it didn't matter. that brought down Goliath. It wasn't his feelings that encouraged him to go out there. Amen. But it was his faith in God. He knew that God could. He knew that God would. Amen. He knew that God was able. And that's the point here tonight. We all will be faced with things that bring feelings and mixed emotions. But we don't walk by feelings. We shouldn't make decisions by our feelings. Amen. We shouldn't make plans by our feelings Amen. or by our impulses. We should do it by faith and trust and firm reliance upon who God is. Yes. Amen. What makes the difference tonight? The just shall live by their faith. Amen. He said in Hebrews 10, 38, But if any man draw back, my soul shall not have any pleasure in Him. What does that mean to draw back? To draw away from that place of faith. To draw back and return back to that place of the flesh and carnality that God once brought you out of. Yeah. He said, God, God's saying, the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in Him. 
He said, for we are not of those who draw back unto perdition, but those that what? Feel? No. Those that believe yes. unto the saving of the soul. Amen. Amen. We're not going backwards, relying upon feelings and all things, but we're going forward, believing in God. Yes. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Faith overcomes. Amen. Amen. No matter what we see, no matter how things may look, faith is greater and faith is necessary. Amen? Amen. Faith is necessary. We don't just go by what we see, but we go by who we know God to be and what we believe Him to be. Amen? Amen. God's people have been through so many things. Every one of us can testify of something we've gone through, something we've been through, where it looked like it was the end. It looked like that dog was coming to get us, and it just looked like it was over. But God, Amen. but God helped, amen? Yes. But God stepped in. But things changed. We don't walk by sight in the spirit realm. We walk by faith. Amen. Tonight it's not faith, but it's feelings. Tonight, how is your faith? How is your faith? Not how you're feeling, but how's your faith? Amen. Amen. How's your faith life? Have you been giving in to those feelings and what you see and allowing your feelings to maybe, as some men put it, to get the best of you? Mm -hmm. Or allowing what you know in your heart and what we know the Scripture teaches us to be right and to be true? For the just shall live by faith. As your heads are bowed tonight and eyes are closed in reverence to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your power. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the reality in serving you. Father, increase our faith, Lord. It's our prayer tonight as we turn the service to you, Lord. You know every heart. You know every need. Father, help us to not give in to our feelings, but God, to rely upon who you are, to trust in you with all of our heart, all of our soul and strength. God, bless your people as we pray, as we turn the service over to you. May your will be accomplished. In Jesus' name, we do pray. As the Christians find a place to pray tonight, these altars are open for prayer. Let us draw near to the Lord tonight. And he will draw near to us. Amen. Let's find a place to pray and allow Jesus to touch us one more time.
tonight. Are you looking above? Look above. promises that are yes and amen. amen. Yeah. Lord, continue to help us, strengthen us, Lord. Increase our faith, Lord, as we go forward for you. The Lord, not walk by sight, but God, teach us and help us, Lord, to walk by faith, Lord. Not by what we hear, not by what we see, not by what we feel, but by God, who you are and the reality in serving you. Father, thank you tonight for the promises of your word that are yes and amen. God, go with all of your people. Bless your children tonight, Lord, as we go our separate ways. And Lord, bring us back again to receive from you at the appointed time. And let us continue, Father, to walk and grow in faith and in love for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you tonight is our prayer. Yes, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. You go with God, you know what He will do. Amen. 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 He will go with you. For the just shall live by their faith. Amen. Amen. By their faith. The next time you're tempted to give into a feeling, think about. Amen. Think about the... The, the reality of God. Remember His promises. Remember what He said. Amen? Right. Remember what He said. Because the just live by their faith. Amen. 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 God bless you tonight. We'll see you next time in the house of the Lord. Love one another. Pray for one another. Remember uh, Rick, Rick and Janet uh, in prayer. Rick has his eye surgery this week coming. He's getting his eye surgery uh, done. I think Tuesday is it? He's having that special laser surgery so we can see again and uh, and then shortly after that I'll have the other one done. My dad's getting it done too uh, in, January. in January, right? And uh, it's it's so whatever, it's it's amazing how quick they can do these things mm -hmm. these days. But pray for pray for Rick, pray for Janet. Uh, they're online all the time and, 
And uh, we miss them and everyone else, too, that uh, is still out there. Amen. Amen. And it's still out there. God bless you. God bless you. You are dismissed from the house of the Lord tonight.